Hello, Tara Henry here, back with Stat Chat and the Natalie Hansen from 643 Charts. Natalie, welcome back. We took a week off, but it's great to see you. Yes, it's great to be back. And I'm so excited to dig into some of these stats for these teams that are playing in the postseason. So we're going to take a look at the most exciting game, conference championship game from last week. Middle Tennessee at North Texas, 12-inning thriller. You can take a look at that win probability chart, swinging to Middle Tennessee in the bottom of the sixth, then going back up uh, in the top of the seventh to North Texas. But Huge play that we want to highlight, Natalie, uh, for Middle Tennessee. And we're going to take a look at one of the most impactful plays. Here's the pitch. Hit in the air. Down the left field line. Diving is Behabits. She's got it. Savannah Behabits saves the day for Middle Tennessee. Another great defensive play in this game, and we are going to extra innings for the first time in Conference USA Tournament history. We'll have extras. What a play, Bobby Hammond. You got to love that. I mean, first time Conference Championship history. We're going into extras. Uh, Savannah B. Habits with a clutch play in left field. Uh, to to hold that runner that was obviously going to score if she doesn't make that grab. Natalie, thoughts? Yeah, I mean, that play was just amazing, forcing it to go into extras. Um, and they actually stayed in extras until the 12th inning. So they played almost a completely separate second game after that play. Um, and ultimately, Middle Tennessee came out with that win um, with an RBI single in the top of the 12th. So congratulations to Middle Tennessee. Most exciting game of the week. Now we're going to head into the most exciting Power 5 championship. That was Utah at UCLA. And what a thriller that was on at 7 p.m. Pacific. So a little late on the East Coast for most people. But UCLA, as you can see, win probability. Winning uh, most of uh, that game in the win probability model. Uh, and then Utah coming back. Amy Hogue and her squad. We've got a clip of Hallie Morris and this clutch to run shot for the Utes uh, to, to pull ahead of the Bruins. A drive, deep center, into the hitter's backdrop, a home run! Tucson native, Hallie Morris, a two run blast. So clutch. I, it, up by one run, up by three runs. Those insurance runs were huge for the youths. Natalie, thoughts on this pe Power 5 uh, Utah-UCLA championship? Yeah, I mean, before that pinch hit home run, it was a pinch hit off the bench, um, the youths were up by one. And I don't think any team feels comfortable only being up one on UCLA this season. Um, so getting those extra insurance runs um, really helped out the youths. And I actually, going into the bottom of the seventh for UCLA's last chance, um, Utah had a 97% win probability. So those extra runs really helped them get um, to that point in the win probability model. I love that. So the win probability models, those are going to be free on the site in the postseason. Surprise, everybody. We're, we, we're announcing it now. But those win probability site or models will be free on the site. So once games are finished uh, and those are uploaded, you'll be able to see those win probability models through the postseason. Thank you to our friends at 643 Charts. So those are the most exciting games of the week. Now we're going to head into some stats. But first, we got to take a look at some, some big time home run numbers. We love doing this every week. And these are teams still playing in the NCAA tournament. So Natalie broke these out in looking at teams that are still in. So the top 64 teams that are still uh, playing in division one softball, the Hokies are still winning with at, at the top spot in 97 uh, with a home run rate of 5.82 and closing the gap uh, to number two, Oklahoma uh, with 94 home runs at a 5.86 home run rate. But Natalie, I want to talk to you about this. What sticks out to you uh, in taking a look at these home runs by team? Yeah, I think what sticks out to me is 
In terms of the home run rate, Virginia Tech and Oklahoma don't have as much separating them as we saw two weeks ago. So it's kind of like leveled out um, between those two teams. Um, and additionally, everyone always is keeping an eye on Oklahoma's home run numbers. So at this point last year before the NCAA tournament, they had 125 home runs as a team. Um, this year they have 94 at the same point in time. Wow. So we're looking at a difference of 29 home runs from this year to last year. Uh, that's a, that's a good amount. Would you say 20, 125? Yep. So 31 home runs. Yeah. And last year in the postseason, the Sooners um, hit around 30 home runs in the NCAA tournament. Um, so just something to keep an eye on as the Sooners continue play throughout the season. So those are our home runs by team. And again, those are the teams still playing in the NCAA tournament. Obviously, number five, Indiana, uh, with Taryn Kern, the rookie uh, at the middle there. And then number 10, Minnesota. They've got 69 home runs. Uh, was not, I was not uh, expecting to see the Gophers up, but they've got 69 home runs as a team. So that is home runs by team. Now we will go into home runs by individual Leading the nation, Kiki Malloy uh, out of Tennessee, but you know, just behind her, Taryn Kern and Taylor Roby at 22, uh, followed by Kristen Feifel the GCU and Kylie Spade out of Miami, Ohio. What I think is most interesting about this, Natalie, is those top three players are in the same regional uh, in Knoxville, and we'll have a ton of uh, balls flying out of the yard, I think, in that Knoxville regional. Yeah, and speaking of that, this season, Kiki Malloy has 12 of her 23 home runs in Knoxville on their home field. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see if she'll add to those numbers this weekend. So that's home runs by individuals. Number eight, Valerie Cagle. Uh, she's at 18, tied up with Maya Brady, uh, Ramsey Lopez at GCU, uh, Jada Kearney at Georgia, and Anna Gold at 18. Skylar Wallace, uh, again, top three player of the year finalist, Skylar Wallace, she's got 19. And then Rylan Hedgecock at Arkansas, she's got 20. So an idea of who's hitting the long ball. And then that home run rate, Kiki Mulloy, 11.7 uh, home run rate for her. So the ball's leaving the yard uh, a significant amount of times when Kiki Mulloy's up to bat. So that's our home runs uh, by individual. Again, these are the only players that are still playing in the NCAA tournament. Now we're going to head to speed score. Our advanced stat of the week. Natalie, I'm going to let you take this. Uh, let's introduce speed score because this is arguably one of my favorites now uh, that we're, we're bringing it up because uh, we know I love some speed. Yeah, so speed score gives us um, this comprehensive metric to really analyze player speed. Um, and this is aside from just stolen bases. It takes the stolen base percentage as well as triples, runs scored, and avoiding double plays. So it's looking not only at how they can steal a base in just that scenario, it looks at how they run um, in the different scenarios that they're faced with. Um, it's a factor weighted between zero and 10. Um, so your players that are up towards the nines are gonna be your players that are the fastest or have the highest speed score. So let's take a look at the speed score uh, for those players still in the NCAA tournament. No surprise here, Skylar Wallace with a speed score of 9.39, uh, just uh, ahead of Chelsea Manto out of Hofstra. But in looking at this speed score, uh, top 10, Natalie, can you break this down, the PA versus the speed score? Can you break this down for us so that we know exactly what the speed score is taking a look at? Yeah, so the players that we pulled um, for this, all of their plate appearances, um, we picked players with over 100. So this is getting rid of um, pinch runners that are subbed in just to run. This is those everyday players um, for these teams. And Skylar Wallace at the top here, I mean, 30 stolen bases on this season. Um, but something that's interesting here is she has actually scored from second base on a single nine times this season. So aside from just stolen bases, this shows how fast these players are and how well they run the bases. Um, Chelsea Monto down here, 
Um, she works from the left side of the plate. She bunts, she slaps. Um, she has 18 infield singles this season. You see Tyra Parker, Michaela McLean in the third and fourth spots, both from Campbell. Um, Campbell ranks third as a team um, still playing in the NCAA tournament for stolen bases. So these players, when they get on, they're going to steal a lot of bases and they're going to take advantage of taking extra bases on singles. Incredible. So that's our speed score, top 10 in the nation right now that are still playing in the NCAA tournament. Again, uh, Caitlin Coker out of BU, uh, Addison Barnard, Wichita State, Laura Mueller out of Middle Tennessee, Hannah Burnett out of GCU, Shelby Eccles, another one out of Middle Tennessee, rounded out at number 10, Maya Davis uh, with Louisiana at a 9.14. So pretty cool to take a look at that and see – Who's running the base as well? Who's able to create uh, runs and, and some havoc on the base pass uh, for speed score? I think this is, I mean, this is, I mean, maybe I'm probably biased, but uh, I love a little bit of the speed score. So hopefully you all enjoyed that advanced stat of the week. Natalie, final thoughts before we head into the postseason and regional play. I'm just so excited to see how these regionals shake out and, um, being able to next week kind of break down the teams that are left in some of these advanced stats as well. Well, we'll be here next week after regionals to preview super regionals for some more fun advanced stats. Tara Henry for D1 Sopple, Natalie Hansen, 643 Charts. Uh, thank you all for joining Stat Chat. We'll see you all next week.